Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel GKR Soft. In this video, we are going to see the difference between ESP32 and ESP8266. In our previous video, we discussed about ESP32 overview. I have mentioned the link in the description. You can watch it. What is ESP32 and what is ESP8266? Both are serial to Wi-Fi microcontroller. Both as inbuilt Wi-Fi. In this video, we are going to see more deeper about for which application we can choose which board. First, we will understand more deeper about ESP8266 board. It has 9 variety of board. ESP01. This is the most basic ESP8266 module. It has very limited GPIOs. Two GPIO pins can be usable. It has 1 MB flash memory. It doesn't have an USB to serial adapter for programming. So, we can use ESP01 with Arduino kind of boards to provide the Wi-Fi facility. ESP07, it's upgrade over the ESP01. It has more GPIO pins. 16 GPIO pins are there, there in ESP07. It has 4 MB flash memory. We can use in advanced projects because of lot of GPIO pins are there in ESP07. ESP12F, ESP12E both are very similar. The slight difference is antenna design and placement for improved signal strength. It has 11 GPIO pins and 4 MP flash memory. It's standalone usable for IoT applications. The Node MCU is the next ESP8266 board. It's a very famous one in the market. It actually has 4 MP flash memory, 11 GPIO pins, but it has internal CH340 or CP2102 USB to serial adapter. Then it's easy for programming. And it has onboard voltage regulator, support 3.3 volt, making it easy, easier to use in prototyping. The next one is Vemos D1 Mini. It's a compact development board based on ESP8266. It's smaller than Node MCU, but the feature is very similar. It also has 4 MP flash memory, 11 GPIO pins, and USB interface for programming. Adafruit ESP8266 is a next board in ESP8266 family. It has 4 MP flash memory, 9 GPIO pins, a built-in voltage regulator, and it supports programming through USB to serial adapter. ESP13, it's commonly used in Arduino-like form factors and integrates the ESP8266 onto the board that is compatible with Arduino shields. It has 4 MP flash memory, 16 GPIO pins, Arduino compatible form factor. It can be used with stand standard Arduino shields. Vemos D1R2. This is called as Lolin Vemos D1R2. It is an Arduino Uno shaped development board using the A266. It is compatible with some Arduino shields. The main key feature in Vemos D1R2 is it has 4 MP flash memory, 11 GPIO pins and USB interface for programming. So the basic module like ESP01 and ESP07 that's very best for adding Wi-Fi to existing project or minimalistic designs. But Node MCU, Vemos D1 Mini or Vemos D1 R2 that can be act as a standalone development board. Now next we will understand more deeper about ESP32 boards. It has 12 variety of boards. ESP32, WRM32 is a very famous module which will be used for the more projects in mo most of the projects. ESP32, WRM2 most commonly used ESP32 module and it's available in DIP format. It's make it very easy to integrate into the breadboards for prototyping. It is a dual core processor. In our previous video, we mentioned the complete specification about ESP32. So ESP32 has a dual core processor and 512 KPS RAM. 4 MP flash memory, 30 plus GPIO pins and it's available in variety of pin configuration like 30 or 38 pin versions. It depends on the which board you are going to choose. ESP32 W Rover. That is also similar to room series but it additionally includes PS RAM, pseudo static RAM. It's better for applications that requires more memory. For an example video streaming or image processing, you can choose W Rover boards. The next one is ESP32 Node MCU. It also similar like a ESP8266 Node MCU. And this also has 4 MP flash memory. 
and dual core processor and it has built in usb to serial converter as cp2102 uh, or ch340 and it is very compatible with arduino ide lua and micro python same like node mcu esp8266 the next one is vemos lowlin32 or lowlin32 lite this is also very small and compact development board with usb programming support and this is particularly designed for portable iot projects it also has 26 gpio pins dual core processor 4 mp flash memory and it has a small form factor and includes battery management features for portable applications and adafruit also has a esp32 development board that's a very user friendly esp development board with excellent documentation and support it is designed for ease of use and integrates well with Arduino IDE and Circuit Python. It also has 30 GPIO pins, 4 MP flash memory, dual core processor, and small form factor. Uh, great for prototyping. This is well suitable for for multiple applications. And the next one is TT Go E Display ESP32 with LCD screen. But this is a bit costlier because it has an inbuilt LCD screen. It's actually uh, usually 1.114 inches this board is ideal for iot projects required to play for data visualization it also has dual core processor 4 mp flash memory and more than 14 gpio pins next one is m5 stack esp32 it's a development kit that comes in a box like form factor it's designed for rapid prototyping with pre-built enclosure display and several expansion modules it also has multiple GPIO pins, an integrated speaker, buttons, other components, built-in display. It also has dual-core processor. And next one is ESP32 Pico Kit. It's a very small development board designed around ESP32 Pico T4. It's highly integrated system in package. It's called a SIP with all essential components. It has ultra small form factor and it's very suitable for low power and embedded applications. It has more than 30 plus GPIO pins. Spark when ESP32 thing. This is a development board that includes power management and USB interface for programming. It has dual core processor, 4 MP flash memory, built in LiPo battery charger, 30 GPIO pins, and it also supports Wi Fi and Bluetooth. ESP32 Cam. It's a compact ESP32 development board that comes with the built in camera module. The, the, the module name is called OB2640. It's actually used for the applications like surveillance, image processing, and streaming. It has inbuilt OB2640 camera, dual core processor, and it supports micro, card, micro SD card slot and 9 GPIO pins, but it doesn't have no built in USB serial adapter. It requires an external programmer. ESP32 S2. It's a single core version of the ESP32 with better security features. Include hardware accelerated encryption and more security options. It has 320 KB SRAM, 4 MP flash memory and single core processor. It supports 240 MHz and it has USB OTG support. And it also has built-in security features like AES, RSA, etc. ESP32 S3. It's a dual core version of the ESP32 S2 with improved artificial intelligence and machine learning capability. Specifically designed for edge artificial intelligence applications and human computer interaction. It also has dual core processor, 512 KB SRAM. It supports artificial intelligence inst instructions for faster interference. It supports Wi Fi, Bluetooth, low energy 5.0, and it's ideal and suitable for edge devices. So ESP32 also has basic level boards. Also, it can support higher level boards with the LCD screen. And also some of the boards supports the artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now, we will see about the major difference between ESP8266 and ESP32. In processor wise, ESP8266 has single core processor. But ESP32 is a dual core processor. Clock speed is in ESP8266, 8 mega, 80 MHz to 160 MHz. But in ESP32, it's actually a double, 160 MHz to 240 MHz. Processing power less than ESP32 in ESP8266. But in ESP32, it's actually more. It supports Wi-Fi, inbuilt Wi-Fi, 2.4 GHz. Bluetooth, according to Bluetooth, ESP32 has a Bluetooth. But ESP8266 doesn't have a Bluetooth. 
when consider as like GPIO pins, ESP8266 has 15, 16, around 17 usable pins. But in ESP32, up to 36. But it depends on the board which we are choosing it. SRAM in ESP8266 is 160 KB. In ESP32, 520 KB. Flash memory is both are same in ESP8266 and ESP32. According to the power consumption, there is no ultra low power feature is available in ESP8266. But in ESP32, it supports various low power modes. When it is coming to cost, ESP8266 is very cheaper. But ESP32, it's actually a bit costly, but not very costly one. ESP8266 cost is around 200 to 250, but ESP32 is 350 to 400. Now, when it is coming to which module we need to choose for our application, for our project, so we need to consider some of the factors. One is processing power, memory, whether it has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and how, whether how it supports the peripherals, and power consumption, and finally the cost. So when it is coming to processing power, ESP32 is a better choice. But when it is coming to memory, obviously ESP32 is the better option. But when it is coming to cost, obviously ESP8266 is a very cheaper one. So when you are working for a college level projects, then ESP8266 alone enough. But when you are coming artificial intelligence or you want a display or you want a Bluetooth related support and you want to have an inbuilt lot of sensors, then ESP32 is the better option. When it is coming to power consumption, obviously ESP8266 might be the better choice. But everything is depends on your application, which one you are going to choose. But if you ask me, both are excellent boards. Depends on your application, you can choose it. Thank you so much for your time to listen our explanation. And if you like it, please share it with your friends. Please subscribe our channel for more technical information. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.